All right, so we just looked at a combination that's called a sigma type combination between the two 2s orbitals. Another kind of sigma type combination is between the 2px and the 2px orbitals. So let's take a 2px and give it another 2px right next to it. Let's bring these two orbitals together and see the resulting orbital combination. When we do that, let's say there's atom 1 and there's atom 2. Between the nuclei, they'll reinforce each other like so. And on the outsides, we'll just have slightly smaller lobes that are co colored the opposite way. So we can see that this is definitely a bonding orbital. This is an example of constructive overlap. Let's take now the opposite, where we keep one of the orbitals the same, but then we take another 2px and invert the phase. So now we've got an example of destructive overlap in here. What this would look like is we would have small lobes in the middle and the larger lobes on the outside. And this is definitely an example of an anti-bonding orbital as we've got the node in the middle right there, right? All right, so what does this mean energetically for the orbitals? Well, if we take the two p orbitals, let's say they're at the same energy, and we combine them constructively, we lower the energy of the resulting orbital. And the way we draw that is through a molecular orbital diagram like this. Remember that the vertical axis is energy, and so combining the two orbitals lowers the energy of the resulting orbital, which we draw in the middle, and say we had one electron in one orbital and one in another, we would end up with two electrons in the final combined orbital. So we formed a bond through that combination. The other combination, the anti-bonding, is the exact opposite scenario. So say we had two orbitals, two p orbitals, because it's destructive overlap and we're actually condensing the electron density somewhat. We raise the energy of that orbital and say we brought in two electrons again we would have two electrons in this higher energy orbital so this is an example of a bonding and an anti-bonding combination now for the purposes of molecular orbitals both of these combinations are allowed quote unquote by quantum mechanics so really in a real molecule which has both of these p orbitals sort of built into it we would see both combinations. We would see the P plus P combination, which will be the bonding, and the P minus P combination, which will be the anti-bonding combination up here. And if we brought in only two electrons total, then net, we formed a bond. The anti-bonding orbital exists, and it's very important, especially if we think about more electrons coming in to this molecule. But if it's not filled, then there's still an incentive for the molecule to form bonds uh, to, to overlap its p orbitals like so. All right. Not every combination of orbitals is allowed. Disallowed combinations happen when you have equal amounts of constructive and destructive overlap. So let's take a look now at a combination that comes from that, uh, that table that I showed you. Let's take an s orbital and a py orbital like so, and just combine those two. What we see is that as we bring this guy closer, we have a region of constructive overlap with the top lobe, but then we have a region of destructive overlap with the bottom lobe. Draw that here with the red highlighter there. There are equal amounts of constructive and destructive overlap. And remember I said, well, if we take two orbitals, and these would be of slightly different energy, but if we took two orbitals and combined them together in a bonding or constructive fashion, we would lower the energy. And if we took two orbitals and raised uh, and uh, combined them in an anti-bonding fashion, we would raise their energy. But in this case, there's equal amounts of raising and lowering of the energy, so the resulting molecular orbital, if it existed, would be exactly between the two. So there's no energy incentive, in other words, for these two orbitals to combine. So the molecular orbital diagram for a combination, quote unquote, like that, which is disallowed, would just be the two separate orbitals at their same energies. They have no incentive 
to overlap because they have equal amounts of bonding and anti-bonding character. So for instance, if we brought in one electron each, the resulting orbitals in the molecule would have one electron and those orbitals would be essentially undisturbed. This is an example of a disallowed combination and really it's key in the energetics to think about the orbitals being unaffected because we'll see examples later on where we have orbitals that are unable to combine with anything else and we just leave them at their same energy and they have their same appearance. That's also important so this this combination quote unquote which is really not a combination at all would just lead to the separated orbitals on the two atoms. So we'd have one orbital that would look like that and another orbital that would just be the isolated p orbital on the other atom. We'll see examples of that when we start talking about hybrid orbitals. Alright, finally, there's a third kind of combination that looks quite a bit different from the sigma type allowed combinations that we looked at uh, on the slide before last. So imagine if we took two py orbitals which are parallel to one another and combine them. If we do that, remember there are two ways to combine them and molecules can and will do both. One is sort of this in-phase way. Another way is with opposite phases, like so. When we combine these, you can imagine the top lobe and the bottom lobe sort of merging together. So as a final result, what we would see is a top lobe that's all light and a bottom lobe that is all darkly shaded or neg of opposite phase or negative phase. Um, and this would be a bonding combination because between the nuclei we have introduced higher electron density than in the separated orbitals. Notice we have a node all the way through there. So there's an entire plane actually that corresponds to a node that runs along the bonding axis. So despite the presence of that node, this is still a bonding combination. Similarly down here, we would have a similar thing except now the orbitals would be pushing away from each other. So we would have a combination that's anti-bonding that would look somewhat like this. Between the, electron, uh, between the atoms, we have again this node here, but we also have a node between the nuclei right there. So this is clearly, because of this node in the middle here, an anti-bonding combination. Now if we look at the energetics of this, we're bringing in two orbitals of equal energy, and we're forming a bonding orbital, so that lowers the energy of the resulting combination. And here, we're forming an anti-bonding orbital, so that raises the energy of the resulting combination. Now, what's the relative raising and lowering relative to a sigma-type combination, for instance, is a, is a reasonable question to ask. Is pi type, are pi-type orbitals lower or higher in energy than sigma-type? Well, if we looked at a corresponding sigma-type combination, say between the px's, where these are turned 90 degrees, towards each other, so they're pointing directly at each other, that sigma combination is substantially more extreme in energy, which means that the sigma orbital, the sigma combination, will be lower in energy than the pi, but the sigma star or anti-bonding combination, the sigma anti-bonding, which I'm trying to squeeze in here, will be higher in energy than the pi star or pi anti-bonding combination. We use that star to represent an anti-bonding orbital, just as a conventional right there. All right, so keep in mind these two kinds of allowed combinations, sigma and pi. Keep in mind that sigma orbitals are more extreme in energy than pi type orbitals. And keep in mind the nature of disallowed combinations, where we have equal parts constructive and destructive overlap. So think of them as neither bonding nor uh, anti-bonding. Think of them as um, non-bonding orbitals.